Okay, we are going to continue our discussion of types of collisions by today focusing on elastic collisions. So, uh, to go back a little bit, let's look at the analogy of throwing something against a wall. If we throw something against a wall with a speed of 10 meters per second and it completely sticks to the wall, and it sticks to the wall, we're talking about a completely inelastic collision. Okay. Um, if we throw something and it bounces off with some of its velocity, it's inelastic. And if it bounces off with all of its velocity, it's elastic. Now, if we imagine this wall not as the wall, but instead as the center of mass of the system of two objects, we can imagine it like a collision. When two objects hit, they are meeting at the center of mass and bouncing off of each other. And the way that they bounce off of each other determines whether we call it completely inelastic, inelastic, or elastic. So if they bounce off of each other and lose oh, the wrong one. If they bounce off of each other, if they bounce off of each other and lose all velocity with respect to the center of mass, it's inelastic. They stick. If they lose some, then it's partially inelastic. And if they lose if they don't lose anything, it's elastic. And that's where we're going to spend our time today. So, this idea that it loses no velocity with respect to the center of mass is extremely important. The other thing to keep in mind for this is that for all types of collisions, momentum is conserved. But we're talking about one specific type of collision. These are elastic only. So what we're about to do only applies to elastic collisions. And we're relying heavily on this idea that they lose no velocity with respect to the center of mass. So our first example, um, our first two examples, we're going to use the same two masses. So a five kilogram mass traveling at 10 meters per second. And in this case, towards another five kilogram mass, also traveling at 10 meters per second. Now, because we're bouncing off the center of mass of the system, one thing that we need before we start One thing we need to do is to find the velocity of center of mass. So, um, for this example, the velocity of center of mass is zero. So we don't have to worry about doing uh, anything, really. It's very simple. Um, so, if that doesn't move, if the velocity of center of mass is zero, we know that these two things are going to hit, and if they bounce off elastically, each five kilogram object is going to take all of its 10 meter per second velocity with it. That's what it means to be elastic. Okay, this is a very very simple example. So what we're going to do is get a little bit more complicated. So for the next one that we look at, continue that line all the way out. Same two masses, five kilograms traveling at 10 meters per second. Well, we're going to put the other one at rest. 5 kilograms not moving. Now, what we need to do is find the velocity of center of mass. That's the first thing. Here we see that the velocity of center of mass, and you can calculate this on your own, is 5 meters per second. So in this case, the, the center of mass is moving at 5 meters per second which is not convenient to us. Up above, it was very convenient, right? Center of mass isn't at rest, they just bounce completely off of it. So what we're going to do is move into a reference frame where the velocity of center of mass is at rest. Now, mathematically, in order to do that, in order to move down here, we subtracted five. So we're going to have to do that with each mass. All right. So my first 5 kilogram mass, I take 10 meters per second, subtract 5 from it in order to get down here into this reference frame. So that thing is moving forward in this reference at 5 meters per second. And for this other one, 0 minus 5, moving with negative 5. 
meters per second. Now the convenient thing about this again is that the velocity of center of mass is zero, which is very similar to what we did up here. So we can say here, because the velocity of center of mass is zero, that after the collision, their velocities just reverse. So he's now going negative five meters per second, and this one is going five meters per second. Now that's not in a real reference frame, that's in one that we made up, so we're going to have to get back out. Now if we subtracted five to get down here, we're going to add five to get back out. Looking at what's going on, this first five kilogram mass, we're going to have negative five plus five, is not moving after the collision, and this other one, five kilogram mass, is moving with the speed of 10 meters per second after the collision. So what we've done here is found the two final velocities of these objects using this idea that they bounce off of the center of mass without losing velocity. We're going to do one more example of that. Um, so the last example that we're going to do, at least on the video for this, change it up a little bit. So we're going to have a five kilogram object moving at, no, I'm sorry, I don't want five kilograms. We're going to have a three kilogram object moving at five meters per second towards a two kilogram object that is going to begin at rest. So to begin, first thing we do is find the velocity of center of mass. In this case, looking at our numbers, the velocity of our center of mass is three meters per second. So, that's moving forward with a velocity of three meters per second. What we need to do is move into a new reference frame where the velocity of center of mass is zero. So we're going to subtract three meters per second from everything. So we have a three kilogram object moving towards the center of mass at two meters per second and a two kilogram object moving towards the center of mass at negative three meters per second. So what we did here in our second step was subtract the velocity of center of mass sorry subtract the velocity of center of match from each velocity find the velocity of center of mass subtract that from each velocity now we know that when they collide in the elastic collision their velocities just reverse they bounce off the center of mass completely so he was going two meters per second towards the center of mass. He's now gonna go two meters per second away from the center of mass. And this other object, the two kilogram object, was heading towards it at three. It's gonna move away from it at three meters per second. But that's in our center of mass reference frame. So let's write that down as step three, reverse velocities. And then step four, we're going to add the velocity of center of mass to each. So to get back up into the real world, we subtracted three. We're going to add three back to everything. And after this perfectly elastic collision, my three kilogram object, negative two plus three, is moving forward at one meter per second and my two kilogram object is moving forward at six meters per second with these as the final velocities for my objects 
Now again, this is only in the very special case of the elastic collision. And the reason it works is because they bounce perfectly off of the velocity, I'm sorry, they bounce perfectly off of the center of mass. Our whole idea in going down here is to get to a place where we can easily see that. We can easily see it, that makes these very simple to do. Otherwise we're going to need to do a lot more stuff. This is all there is to finding the velocity of objects after they collide elastically.